Hi, welcome back. In today's video, I will be sharing a unique and interesting method to create a mask without using a selection brush and the refine mask functions. It is pretty amazing, so let's get started. We will go from this to this. Most tutorials will use the selection brush and use the refine function, which works very well actually. However, in this video we are going to use another technique. First, I duplicate the layer and the next step I like to do is to create a red background by using a fill layer, so we can see later how good our mask is. Now the goal is to keep using adjustments until we have a good base for our mask. I will start out with a black and white adjustment. My focus will be on the hair. Move the colors until we get the hair as dark as possible and the background as light as possible. This already looks like a good base for a mask. By adding an exposure adjustment, I can remove a bit more of the background. As we want to keep the hair, and we are trying to get a mask, let's invert it by adding an invert adjustment, as white will be visible later. There are still some greyish areas, which I can fix by adding a curves layer. Just be careful not to lose the detail in the hair. That is the reason why I am zooming in, making sure that I don't lose any details from the hair. Perfect, we now have our main mask for the hair. So, how can we use this as a mask? Well, let me share a very interesting method using a procedural texture adjustment which will create a dynamic mask. I'm going to duplicate the original layer again and put it on top. Then, I will add a live procedural adjustment to it. A procedural adjustment will do nothing without an equation, so let's add an equation. I'm going to apply the shown equation to the alpha channel. Basically, what the formula is saying is to take the average of the RGB values and use this as the alpha, or in other words, everything closer to white will become transparent and everything closer to black will be less transparent. This feels already like a mask, doesn't it? And actually, this is exactly what you see right now. The hair was quite dark, that is why you still see it. Her sweater contained a lot of white, so that is why it has become transparent and shows the underlaying layer. So this will be our base to create a mask group. Before I continue, the procedural layer is now a clipping mask. Let me move it so it becomes a child layer. This will not affect the working of the procedural layer. Next, I will add a black fill layer and put it under the procedural adjustment layer. The black fill layer makes everything black and the procedural layer does not make black transparent. That is why we see everything in black. Here comes the trick. Let's group both of them and put the blend mode of the new group to erase. Now the whole layer has become invisible, which makes sense as the whole group was black. If I now add a layer in between and paint on it with white, the painted areas will become visible. Remember, the procedural adjustment was making white transparent, so painting with white will create gaps in the group, which is then not erased on the main layer, which will have the effect that the white areas will become visible. Long story short, we have created a mask in which we can add layers to. Let me undo the last action by removing the pixel layer I just added for testing. 
Now, if I move the layer we created in the beginning to the group, it will be a mask. As you see, it has become a fully non-destructive mask we can adjust anytime. If we zoom in, we see the mask is not perfect, but that's okay as we focused on the hair. And by the way, the hair looks amazing. Let's fix the imperfections in the mask by adding a new pixel layer and paint with black or white just like a regular mask depending on the array we want to keep or remove. To get the sweater back, I will lower the opacity of the mask group and go back to the pixel layer to continue painting with white to get it back. Perfect. To get a more softer edge on the hair, I can add a Gaussian blur to the hair mask group. To test how our mask looks like, let me change the background fill color to black by changing the red fill layer. And of course, let's also not forget to set the mask group opacity to 100%. First thing you will notice is that there is a lot of white halo in the hair. The reason for this is that the original background contained a lot of white. We can change this easily by adding a recolor adjustment and set it to the same color as the target color or a color very close to the hair. Invert the recolor adjustment and paint with white on the halos. Let me change the background again. And as you can see, with the recolor I can quickly adjust the outer edges of the hair to match with the background. If I play with the background, you get an idea how it all works. You might have noticed the transition of the recolor is not very good. That is because I did it very quickly and with a very hard brush. This can be easily fixed by using a soft brush with low flow to make that transition smoother. Keep in mind that this is just one option to fix the initial halos. You can also use a clone brush on a pixel layer to paint over them. There are many ways on solving this issue. Before I continue by replacing with a new background image, one thing bothers me right now. Her sweater has a blue color cast. You can see it more clearly when I hide the background, which makes sense. The blue color cast is very normal, because in the original photo the model was standing in front of a water reflecting the blues. A quick fix will be adding an HSL layer and using the picker to select the color casted color and adjust until her sweater looks perfectly white. I also see that there is an error in the mask. Let me fix that too before continuing. Perfect. Time to paste the background. Cool. You see immediately the effect of the halo color not matching. But we know how to fix this. Before I leave you, let me quickly make sure she blends in better. This is actually not part of this tutorial, but just to share, I adjust the brightness level 
add a gradient map based on the background image, add some blur and finish up with a LUT adjustment. If you're interested in that process, let me know in the comments and I'll do a video on that. I hope you like this masking technique and thanks very much for watching.